Okay, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> so we looked at how to evaluate a limit with the table. So now we're gonna look at a limit with a graph. So it's pretty much the same type of concept. Uh, it's just that you know, we're taking the table uh, because essentially the table is just listing out individual points. And so a graph has taken all these points and just strung them out and then just they just connected all the points together with a curve. So it's the same concept. We just don't actually have to plug in anything. We just basically have to look at it. So when evaluating the limits, this is the one that I like to do the, or the method I like to use the most because it's the easiest. If, if I know what the graph looks like uh, or it's been provided, uh, it makes evaluating a limit really easy. This one I don't like so much just because it's kind of tedious, kind of like it's okay, but it's just not my favorite. All right, so same thing, evaluate the limit, but now we're gonna use this graph. So as X is approaching two, what is happening with the Y values? Or the function values. So we're gonna move in from the left side of two and we're gonna trace in and as you get closer and closer to x equals two, what y value does it look like you're gonna run into? Because we're not actually gonna get all the way over there, but what does it look like we're gonna run into? Hmm, looks like we're gonna run into one. Now if I come in from the right side and trace, and get it all the way over to x equals two or as close to it as I can possibly get. What y value does it look like I'm gonna run into? It looks like I'm gonna run into one as well. So the limit is gonna be one. You're approaching the same thing from both sides, just like you did on the table. Uh, from the left and the right, if they're the same value, that's what the limit equals. That's what the function values are approaching. All right, let's try some more. Always good to have a lot of examples to help explain what you're talking about. Okay, so same type of thing. X is approaching negative four. So we're just gonna trace. So I mean, if you can trace, you can do this type of a problem. So as you get closer to X equals four, negative four, what y value does it look like you're gonna run into? Negative three. And for those of you who are wondering, I wasn't tracing, I wasn't trying to trace perfectly, I was just trying to get it so you can see the different colors. I guess a highlighter would have been a little better. Oh well. So let's trace in from the right. And as you get closer and closer to x equals negative four, it looks like you're gonna run into y equals negative three. So the limit is negative three. You approach the same number from both sides. Okay, for the part C is x approaches positive four uh, from the left. Looks like you're gonna run into y equals one as x approaches four. And then from the right side, as you get closer and closer to x equals four, you're getting closer and closer to y equals one. So the limit is one. Okay, part D, uh, almost the same thing. Uh, we're approaching the same value. It's almost the same graph, but there's a hole in there. Don't panic and like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. Like, yes, you do. If you can do this, you can do anything. You just gotta know how to interpret it, which you will. So as X gets closer and closer to uh, four, what Y value does it look like you would eventually run into if you could? Well, it looks like you would run into Y equals one. You can't actually hit it because there's a hole there but it looks like you could run into it if it was possible. So you're getting closer and closer to y equals one, and that's what the limit is doing. It's saying, hey, what are you getting closer and closer to? Not what is the actual value, 
when x is 4, because there is no values. The function value is not defined. But it wants to know, well, what is it that you're approaching? From the right side, it's the same thing. You're approaching x equals 4, and it looks like you're approaching y equals 1. You can't actually hit it, but you're getting closer and closer and closer to it. So you're approaching the same y value from either side. So your answer is 1. So remember, this is kind of where it gets a little tricky, is that it's all about what is the function approach, not what does the function equal. Those are two different questions. All right, so let's look at the last one. So it's a little bit different. So there's still a hole there, but now there's a point uh, written above. So when most calculus students look at this for the first time, it's really a 50-50 to a lot of them because they're like, well, it's either going to be 1 or it's going to be 4. <clears throat> so at least if you totally forgot how to do the problem, it comes down to 50-50, and there you go. You can kind of guess. Um, but let's see how to actually do it so you don't have to guess. So you're approaching x equals 4 from the left, and it looks like you're still going to run into 1 because <clears throat> it looks like that's what you're approaching. From the left or from the right side, as you get closer and closer to x equals 4, you're still approaching y equals 1 from over there, so the limit is equal to 1. So, this is a really good example to illustrate uh, a, a good point with these limits. Limit values. Uh, do not always equal function values. Sometimes they do, but not all the time. As in this case, the limit value we said was 1, but if we actually look at the function value, Like if I said, okay, well, what is g of 4? Now you're looking for, well, where's the actual point? So when x is 4, your point's up here. So g of 4 is 4. So limit values and function values do not always have to equal each other. Sometimes they do, like in these previous examples, the limit was negative 3. Well, that was the y value when x is negative 4. So in this case, g of negative 4 does actually equal negative 3. So sometimes they can be the same, but they don't always have to be. All right, so we'll stop the video here, uh, and we'll pick up uh, where we left off in the next one.